right, so House of the Dragon will be premiering this weekend on HBO. Uh, George R. R. Martin says, Game of Thrones spinoff, House of the Dragon, is all I hoped it would be. Says first says, episode feature scene with red wedding level impact. Okay, this is where I actually have a problem with George R. R. Martin, HBO, and just basically all the hype for this show. I don't believe this show will live up to Game of Thrones standards. I just don't believe it will. Game of Thrones was already had that initial fan base that absolutely just loved every second, loved these characters. You have these characters that are only really known through encyclopedia. That most people didn't even read that book. Uh, what is it? Blood and Fire or whatever the name of that book is. I've read it, but it's nothing that great. It reads like an encyclopedia. Really, truly does. Like a history book. And so you're not going to get people that are connected to these characters already. They're not going to care who is who and who wins and who loses. They're not automatically going to be like, I'm side this. Um... I could be wrong. People just might take to one of these characters. I don't see people taking to Emma Darcy uh, as Rhaenyra. I don't see people taking to uh, Matt Smith as Daemon Targaryen. I just don't see that. I think those personally were bad casting decisions. Uh, I don't just don't see those characters as uh, pulling this show over the finish line. Um, and that's my problem. I'm, I'm thinking in my head, who is that one character that I'm most excited to see? And I personally cannot think of it. I wouldn't normally say Daemon Targaryen, but I don't like Matt Smith as that guy. I don't know how he's going to fit in that role. Uh, so no, I'm not really truly invested in this show yet. And I'm hoping I will be. I truly, truly am. But I don't like that George R. R. Martin is already getting out there and saying there's red wedding moments. That's a pretty big thing to say. And if you can't back it up, that's going to really hurt the rest of this show because they're going to be like, fans are going to be like, what else did you hype up? What else did you lie about? And I feel like we're getting into that territory. And I feel like everything that George R. R. Martin right now is saying, everything that HBO is saying, everything that the media is saying, uh, it's almost kind of like the Lord of the Rings series that's coming out. Everything that everybody is saying is making it worse, not better. Uh, if this show would come out and fans just took to these characters and, hey, it was the next Game of Thrones, it would have been great. If it was average, been great. But no, they're hyping it up to such an extent that it either has to be Game of Thrones or bust. And that's going to be terrible for this show. And I don't like, I mean, that that kills me. That's like, you know, with anything that has to do with Harry Potter. You know, if things don't, if any show that involves Harry Potter doesn't live up to, you know, Harry Potter standards like Fantastic Beasts, then it's automatically deemed a sucky show. And that's not necessarily the case all the way around. There is some good elements of Fantastic Beasts, but they're totally ignored because they don't live up to those standards of Harry Potter. They don't have that already built-in fan base that love or hate specific characters that will watch these characters and fight for these characters like what you had already in Game of Thrones from A Song of Ice and Fire. You don't have this with House of the Dragon, and I think that's going to be its biggest problem. Really, truly do. But let's go ahead and let's get into why George R. R. Martin thinks this. Um, it says, after watching the entirety of the Game of Thrones spinoffs for first season, franchise creator George R. R. Martin has declared that HBO's upcoming House of the Dragon is not only everything he hoped it would be, but also that his first episode features a scene that delivers an emotional impact on par with one of the original series' most iconic events. After recounting his time dealing with recovering from his recent 
San Diego, blah, 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 blah. We'll just go through that. Ryan Condit and Miguel uh, Sapochnik and their amazing cast and crew have done some magnificent work, he opined. House of the Dragon is all I hoped it would be. Dark, powerful, visceral, disturbing, stunning to look at. Uh, uh, peopled with complex and very human characters brought to life by some truly amazing actors. Uh, a further tease from Martin of the spinoffs. Quality would come three days later with Vanity Fair's publication of a joint interview given by the author and Condal in promotion of House of Dragon. Asked by the outlet's senior Hollywood correspondent, Anthony uh, Brezikin, uh, which events in the show's first episode got some of the bigger reactions from audiences during its July 27th world premiere. Condal asserted a lot of people had things to say about the birth of, birth of Prince Balon. So you're telling me that's the game, that is the red wedding moment? A birth? Like, and they've already, the funny thing about that is they've already been bragging about that. They've been bragging about, oh, well, we, we've we made it where, you know, these, these births are really, you know, something to see in this and to see just, you know, that has a 50-50 chance of life, which it was never, or there wouldn't have been any humans alive. Uh, but, you know, they wanted to show, they wanted a detailed childbirth uh, as dangerous because of, of course, what happened in real life with, you know, abortion being going back to the states, you know, by the Supreme Court and states deciding whether or not to choose abortion or not. That was their reasoning behind that. And that's why they're hopping up out of all things childbirth in this show. So there is a political tint to why they're actually trying to hype this up. And that's kind of annoying to a certain extent because right off the bat that tells you, wow, that's your red wedding moment. That's your red wedding moment. A, a birth. Speaking to this particular moment, Martin then remarked, that scene is, you don't want to use the word enjoyable for a scene like that, but it's incredibly powerful. It's visceral and it'll rip your heart out and throw it on the floor, he prays. It has the kind of impact that the red wedding had. It's a beautifully done scene of something horrible. As recounted in Martin's Fire and Blood novel, Prince Balon's birth was marred with tragedy. Therein, not only did his mother, Queen Aimna, Aima, uh, pass away from the complications related to bearing him into the known world, but he himself would only live for one day before following her into the afterlife. Which is going to be sad, no doubt, anytime you see Anything like that is tragic. Uh, but still, it's not red wedding tragic on screen. It, it's terribly tragic to see uh, in a movie or a series or because you can relate that to real life uh, experiences. But, I mean, again, that's just bad hyping and over a weird scene out of all things. In light of his brother's death, Prince Daemon Targaryen became the heir apparent to the House Targaryen. However, this honor would be short-lived as after learning that the young prince was mocking the infant's passing, King Valerius would punish his arrogance by stripping him of the title and naming Rhaenyra as his true successor. Condal would later elaborate that this scene was given particular weight uh, from the series production team because really, this particular story is Viserys' story. How is this Viserys' story? Like, this isn't Viserys' story. Viserys is going to play, or at least should, uh, by the accounts of Fire and Blood, should play a very small role in what goes on. You know, he sets things into motion. He's like Ned Stark. He sets things in motion, but as far as playing a role in the grand scheme of things, He's very small player uh, in it. I, well, it says it right here. It's kicked off by him believing that he's going to have a new male son after trying for years and years and stillbirths and miscarriages and all the hell that Queen Ama uh, has been through as a mother, the showrunner explained. Finally, the answer is going to come. He's very confident and sure of it. It's like that mother and son die in childbirth. Suddenly, everything changes and flips the chess table. 
Okay, I'm not going to read anymore simply because I think we get it. That's the moment. That's the moment. That's the big red wedding moment, guys. That's a big red wedding moment. Childbirth scene. That's it. That's it. That's the moment that you're going to be like, whoa, mind blown. Uh, don't know if I can watch the next episode because childbirth scene. Come on. Seriously? That's the best they got? If that's the best this show's got, I really, truly worry. That's what I'm saying. The hype machine for this is really doing some piss poor work when it comes to this. And it's driving me crazy because I'm like, this show could be great. It could be great. But man, when you keep saying it's going to be like the best thing since sliced bread. It's the best thing since Game of Thrones. You start comparing it to like legendary series. You're, you're just asking for failure at that point. You're just literally asking for failure. So please, George R. R. Martin, cut it out. Showrunners, cut it out. Stop trying to make this uh, the next Game of Thrones. Let it stand on its own. Let fans of the series love or hate it, however it may be. But stop with this weird hype train because childbirth and the sadness that comes from the loss that's going to occur in it will not be as tragic as what you see from the Red Wedding. Simply because fans were invested into the characters in the Red Wedding. Fans are not invested in those characters that are in this childbirth scene. And that's going to that's gonna take a little bit away from this scene. Even if it is tragic, which it will be. I don't doubt that aspect of it. But, so... Let me know what y'all think in the comments down below. Do you feel like George R. R. Martin isn't doing this show service by hyping things up so much by saying there's red wedding moments that is up to that level? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and y'all take care.